from a mental health perspective, one of the ways that we can look at the, the adjustment and the subluxation is a person has, a person has a condition stimulus. The, they have different pressures in their life, whether it's financial or job stress. Um, they, have, they have conflicts in their relationships. They, they have that stimulus, and then their response is, a, is an anxiety or a tension, muscular rigidity, right? You look at the chiropractic adjustment as a counter conditioning response as a counter uh, counter conditioning stimulus the response being that of relaxation and then through subsequent adjustments reinforcing that uh, essentially the state of anxiety a state of tension and uh, state of relaxation they just they're incompatible they can't exist at the same time why is that uh, you were talking to me before about the sleeping. This is where this ties in. Uh, talk about the nervous system a little bit as far as the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight, the run from the tigers, the tigers, the lions, and the bears. The parasympathetic is the, the breathing, it's the resting, the healing, the prayer, the meditation. Okay. The sympathetic nervous system was designed on a, on a human core level to be active for 10 to 12 minutes in order to run away from our predators. Right? It, wasn't, it wasn't designed to be activated all day long, every day. Five hour energy, more Starbucks, more stress, more this, more that, go, go, go. People that come to my office, especially anybody that's in pain, anybody that's having any issue like that, I know that they're here. I know that they're having trouble getting over here. When I adjust somebody, particularly the upper cervical spine, which is where half of the parasympathetic nervous system is housed, cranial, sacral, is the parasympathetics. When I adjust it, that's a very powerful shift back over to the parasympathetic nervous system. That's breaking that, breaking that cycle of being tilted towards the sympathetic, which is why, particularly after a first adjustment, I'll tell people, you're probably going to sleep really well tonight because they've been tilted this this way so long that just a little nudge this way will tip them over into some deeper sleep. Uh, how does it? How do we do that? Um, if you actually look at the nervous system, there's four different kinds of mechanoreceptors: type one, two, three, and four. Type four mechanoreceptors are the nociceptors, they're the ones that initiate pain impulses. Okay. They also have a, uh, a reflexive circuit right back to the spinal cord at that level. So when they're firing, it actually creates this positive feedback loop where it just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. It doesn't adapt. What breaks that cycle is the firing of type one, two, and three. Type one, two, and threes are more for motion and posture, as well as touch. So that's why when little Johnny falls down, it's like, oh, that. They're, you're stimulating the you're stimulating those mechanoreceptors, which are going to inhibit the the pain the nociceptors. Do that as disapprehension or proprioceptive in, in insult. Um, different names for the same thing. Subluxation. Cord tension is another piece to the subluxation of what I'm looking at. So if this represents the spinal cord sitting in here, we're supposed to have, we are designed with three curves in the spine. One here in the neck, the person's facing that way, right? One here in the neck, one here in the thoracic cage, one here in the lung. Okay, three curves. And that's so that as we're bouncing along, it acts as a nice shock absorber. What happens is from a car accident, the whiplash of a car accident, or one of the biggest things that we see today is this little destructive device where everybody's doing this. 
all day long. This gets straightened out, or even worse, reversed. Once it gets straightened out, it's on its way to reversing. It's just a matter of gravity over time until it reverses. But you consider the cord sitting in here with a normal curve, it's nice and slack. As this comes to a straight position, or even worse, reverse, you can see how the cord gets tight. There's tension there. What we know is that there's actually a mechanical factor to the spinal cord, to the firing in the nervous system. It's not just electrical, electrochemical. There's an actual mechanical piece to it. So when this is already tense, it's not going to be firing or functioning as efficiently. So that's one, that's another piece that I'm looking at. And that's very readily visible on this last page here. I wanted to give everybody here some, some really easy take-homes because I know that as mental health professionals, you're sitting there, you're literally looking at a person's face. You're face to face with them, whereas I might be face, they might be face down on my table, at least after the first visit, you're looking face to face at them. If you're seeing anything like this, like any of these pictures, this is something that should trigger, hey, they definitely need to see a chiropractor. Whether it's me or somebody else, I'm happy to refer them somewhere somewhere else, wherever they are. Um, so you might notice a tilt of the head. And I'm not talking about a, a cocky tilt, like, hey, I'm talking about something that it just doesn't look right. Now what's interesting is when the head tilts, our brain has this head writing reflex where it likes to level everything with the horizon. So what you'll oftentimes notice is a shoulder will be higher, as in this picture here, right? Because the head it wants to write itself. Uh, got a wonderful case down here, uh, forward head posture on none other than Justin Bieber. It's Justin Bieber. It's mm -hmm. Justin Bieber. Oh my goodness. Justin Bieber. Google any picture of Justin Bieber side view. Beams. It's horrible. Wow. Right? Huh. That's his problem. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Justin Bieber has no problem. He's an incredible artist. Different mentality. It seems hard. It seems it seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. So so I'm ready. I'm ready for this challenge. And I was built. I was built for this. I think that I think we all we all have a purpose in life. And mine and mine is going to take on a task that most that most of back away from, from. Impossible. that impossible so people say it's impossible, impossible. I, see I see possibilities I don't see anything, I don't see anything as impossible. being impossible mentality mentality there are there are different mentalities but just like just like there's different